Hey guys, today we have a very, very cool video, and it's something that actually is a, kind of a crazy story. I was gonna do a YouTube live stream to make Apex Legends Season 6 special on my channel and different than what we'd all seen, and unfortunately it broke, it wasn't working, and I had to do a video instead. I was a little bummed, but the next morning, I got a text, a DM, excuse me, from Alex, who is the community manager at Apex Legends, and she said, would you like to talk to Rampart? And she meant the actual Rampart, the voice actor of Rampart, Anjali Bamani, and uh, the writer, Manny Hagopian. And I said, this would be an awesome opportunity to bring you all something that is different, that is unique, and that kind of fills that gap of maybe something new from my channel that you haven't seen um, in Apex Legends. She fits right into the family, and in fact, to me, brings something that's really been missing in Apex lately, which is fun. She's lighthearted, and uh, you know, with Revenant and Loba having such a like a, a really murdery uh, vibe, I think this is something that really Apex needed in season six, and I'm excited to share her on a bigger stage and platform with you guys today. I really just want to thank you all for stopping by, and hopefully, even though we didn't do the YouTube stream, uh, this is a new and different, beautiful way to expose uh, the new character of Apex Legends to all of you, get some backstory, and get some hints about what is coming up in season six. So make sure you listen to all of it because you don't want to miss where Manny might drop some, you know, you know, some hints, some winks, some winks. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing bad winks right now. All right, let's get into the video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Leave a like to show some support to Apex for sponsoring and hooking this all up. And uh, let's get started. <laughs> well, I got to hand it to you. You sure do know how to make a fine piece of hardware. <laughs> Not only that, I think she may even be a better shot than you. Well, I reckon we'll never find out. Unless... Fancy a go, Anita? <laughs> Every time, you're just too bad, Pete. <laughs> I love that. Hello. Ah, uh, sorry, mate. All closed down for the night. Ha! Huh, what a lovely pleasure. I usually don't do a gauntlet round twice in one day, but your eyes are just screaming desperation. Uh, don't even think about it. <sighs> right. Everyone got their clean knickers on? I know he does. <laughs> oh. Get her! Where's Big Sister? Hmm? Let's get you patched up. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh I love God. that music at the end. <laughs> I know. That music always gets me so into it. <laughs> right? That was I wanna so hop great. on my motorcycle. Yeah, right. Like yeah. <laughs> off into the sunset with that music. That is. <laughs> we are here. Uh, obviously, we had the introduction. You know what we were doing, but special, special treat to be able to sit down and not only watch the cinematic trailer and reveal for Apex Legends' newest character, Rampart, with the writer and, of course, the voice actress for the character, but now have a chance to talk with them about it here on the channel. So, first of all, I just appreciate you guys coming through. I appreciate you all um, taking the time out of your day. Uh, it, it's just fun. I feel like you can't watch that trailer. Trailer. And, um, you know, especially, you know, Manny, you were kind of behind the scenes of putting that together and seeing those legends in that way. And Anjali, your voice is so electric. You can't watch that character and that trailer and not feel happy and fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Her shop gets burned down, but you yeah. feel happy. In you the just end. feel I'm good. Joyous about it. <laughs> you do. And, and, and Anjali, I guess just uh, to introduce you, I think the biggest thing for me is when I first heard Rampart, there was something that was so... Um, 
I, I think energetic about her voice. Her character is so big, and I think a lot of it has to do with the way that you play her. Um, I just want to talk about your process of jumping into that character and and kind of deciding this is how I, I feel this character needs to live, um, you know, as a voice and as a personality. Sure. Um, well, first of all, the sides that uh, that were sent to us, which were a lot of lines that did end up that we did end up recording, were sent to us for for the audition, were so clearly we're dealing with a smart ass like that's just <laughs> right. that's like start from scratch you're dealing with someone who does not filter who does not and and as soon as i saw that then i thought okay now we're here to play yeah we're just we're here to play this character is here to play it doesn't matter if it's a life or death situation this character is here to play the game of life or death yes yeah um, you know and so um, so that was a big part of, of everything I did, this kind of sarcasm, this kind of dark humor that she had. Um, uh, I am a little person with a big personality, so I think, <laughs> too, I think that was an easy, you know, mm-hmm. an easy slide in. And I love so much, particularly the sass that I know um, of... Of, I mean, I don't even really know how to put this necessarily the correct way, but sure. of in of the Indian people I know who moved to England, who yeah. are a little more a little more street wise, mm, mm-hmm, maybe mm-hmm. a little bit less not let not Oxford educated necessarily, but just a, you know they're scrappier. Um, in fact, I have one friend in particular, and he, in very many ways, I was like, oh, it's just him with long hair. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, cool that's, uh, that's awesome. I got it. Uh, and so all of that was, was part of, of getting to imbue her with, with the bigness, even though she's mm. a little person. Mm. Um, and she's, she's so different from what I usually get to play in the world. I'm mm. usually playing, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, elegant evil people yes. or, um, or aunties on television. Lots of that. <laughs> aunties. Aunties. <laughs> you know, like, like talk, like, like people, but, but people who are a little more composed sure. and she's, I'm, I, I, you can tell, like, I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like I'm way more on the other end of the spectrum in terms of who I really am. So yeah. really I just had to l- look at those lines and, and, you know, fine tune, uh, which accent we were going to bring to it, which we did more in sessions after my audition. Cause I gave a few options and, uh, and then it was just play. And the lines that, that these guys sent my way, I mean, you can't say these without having fun. <laughs> I think that's the thing, Manny. Yeah. I, I wanted to kind of pivot to you as well, writing this character. And, you know, from the decision of, of, of we are going to have a character who has this this huge personality uh, from India, you know, moved to the UK and is somehow, you know, kind of surviving on her own in in kind of a blue collar style. What, what was the, you know, the creation part for you of, of writing and and building out the lore of a character uh, like Rampart? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, a big part of her came from when uh, we were originally making Apex and coming up with the original first A characters. Uh, you know, Mirage was doing that sort of comedy, carrying the comedy. Pathfinder was even carrying some comedy. Right. But uh, I have, I have like a comedy background. I love comedy, and it's um, I, so I've been looking forward to having a character that is. Uh, this sort of like different side of, of of comedy, which is what Anjali brings to the table. This like this wisecracking, sort of quick witted uh, attitude. Um, so we knew that that I, that was a character personality that we were missing. Someone to like really challenge Mirage a bit. Um, also, the the like playing with that cleverness. Uh, I've I've said this uh, online a little bit, but I'm huge like Marx Brothers fan, and I know that doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily <laughs> reference well with our demographic because uh, everyone's uh, that's a very old comedian. But he had uh, Groucho Marx had a lot of those like quick witted, like smart, random jokes that are just. So I, I spent a lot of time just like rewatching all those movies and putting that together to kind of come up with the dialogue for for Rampart. And when Anjali came in reading those lines it was like she she knew what i meant and they're kind right. of ridiculous lines sometimes like so <laughs> no one they're no so one good. on paper <laughs> paper you don't know what it means you're like why is that a joke and then anjali said it and everyone laughs and it's like i guess it is a joke you know? well, and you did such a great job too um uh with with the cockney wordplay 
you know, right. because because uh, people who aren't familiar with this, and I hope I don't say this completely incorrectly, but but <laughs> a lot of times in the Cockney language, the, the the something you say is not the exact words you mean; it just rhymes with it. So it's like a rhyming mm. slang, yeah. and so much. And and I was familiar with that from some other plays and shows and things that I've done. So to be able to figure, it almost feels like you're figuring out the code. <laughs> right. You know, you get the line and you're like, oh, okay, so this really means, okay, cool, go, 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 go. Yeah. Um, so it was like a fun puzzle to figure out at the same time and then to try to make it, make it clear what it means out in the world. So, yeah, you, um, you nailed it with the, the rhythm of it is kind of great because that's kind of how the, the, the British cockney kind of comes into it because it, it helps accent that comedy a little bit more. So when we were coming up with references of who this character is, you know, person, uh, uh, animation wise, I think we, we landed on a bit of like tank girl, someone who's like got this really heavy gun and just, it's just wild and crazy. But if you see tank girls, uh, uh, personality is very, um, like she can say like one liners, but it's, it's all craziness with her, which is super yeah. fun. But Absolutely. I want to add a bit of that like intelligent blue collar aspect to that character because this is Rampart is someone who's been modding weapons since she was like twelve or thirteen. Like she's been doing this a very long time, right. um, and that's a little different than the other characters we've introduced. And that was a big part of how we wanted to approach Rampart um, was that like Loba and Revenant and even, and Crypto, our last three characters are very heavy on their story. Yes. Yeah. Like, you know, Revenant has, uh, uh, his, the beginning of his trailer, it shows him murdering Loba's family. And then Crypto has, <laughs> is blamed for his sister's death. Right. And yeah. it's like, so it's all real heavy dramatics. And we're, and, and we also have a lot of characters who have, uh, Pro, pro issues with their family things that go back mm -hmm. from like gibraltar has a story with his family lifeline has a story with their, her family uh so we were kind of looking for a character who doesn't have those problems mm. it's not a big family issue with her it's not a big dramatic surrounding like another legend or something huge tr huge tragedy that happened in her life this is someone who's just actually part of the world and that's what i think is really cool is that we haven't seen a character who's um, owns a shop in the Outlands, you exactly. know? Exactly. Someone who's yeah. been trying to survive. She's just trying to make her way. And then uh, these these jerks come over and take her shop away from her. But that doesn't... She's used to it, in a way. Because <laughs> yeah. right. she's wild west, you know? She's like, well, right. all right, back on my feet. Yeah. Right. Uh, Anjali, um, pause uh, you, for a second. Pause, 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 yeah, yeah. pause, pause for two seconds. I got a dog. <laughs> I got a dog throwing himself up against the door uh, to get in. Oh no! Oh no! He's like, let me in. <laughs> what a let huge problem! In. Now we get dogs in the video. Yeah. Come here, That's come here, little thing. man. Oh my gosh, you guys! Yes. Uh, uh, can we make this canon? <laughs> yep. Is this canon? Right, Is this lore? Right. Oh. Apparently, apparently. Ramparts um, puppy. My my grandpa's vicious, vicious uh, puppy. Vicious. Um, <laughs> he's vicious. Um, I actually, one thing that I super love about that too, Manny, and we haven't really talked about that, is yeah. you know one of my uh, one of my favorite things about playing uh, any really complex character like like her is that we're we're all a product of not just our experiences but what we do with them, mm. right? Mm. And I think it's always so easy to. I mean, it's always so interesting to see how a character either turns to the light side or the dark side or how they how they turn out basically depending on what they've done with the experiences of their past mm. and so you guys have done such a great job you know with with like with the dark stories that you just talked about with loba with revenant about about showing like how these people are a product of the the, the pains that they are carrying and I'm excited to find out more and then to eventually hopefully share more about like, okay, so why is she so scra- mm -hmm. like, what brought her over there? Right. What brought her, what, what, how, how did this, you know, whenever she moved, how did she end up there? Because she is so like, okay, I got this. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. problem. You can try to take me down. I got. Uh, go ahead, try it. Yeah. I dare you. I mean, I Manny, that, that's a great question, um, and I don't know how much you can share with us. Um, yeah. But you know, what? What? Why is Rampart in this situation? We catch up with her. I think going back to the cinematic trailer we all watched at the beginning, in a kind of interesting spot. Feels like Bangalore and Gibraltar are uh, in a great place where they're just relaxing. Uh, you know, finishing mm -hmm. off the day. 
Um, I'm curious about the Bangalore Rampart relationship because it does seem like they've got uh, a nice, really like friendship going on. And so curious to know more, but kind of like maybe walk us through the moments where we kind of catch in up with them on the cinematic and, and what's happening there and what's with Rampart and Bangalore and maybe a little bit more about her life in the Outlands. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, you know, like I was mentioning of like the her not having this sort of dramatic backstory I also played into wanting a character unlike Revenant, Loba and, and Crypto. I mean, last character who was actually welcomed into our family was Watson. So right. having a new character who is actually mm. like friends with everyone, who's mm. been working on the side, uh, helping everyone mod these weapons, that was super interesting to me because it, it's, a, it's a key moment to kind of bring this family together, especially about the events of the season five quest where it almost felt like this family kind of started like they were getting together and then kind of fell apart. Yeah. And so now, and, and players may have noticed some of that dialogue in this season that is kind of uh, showing that real-time character development. But that's sort of where Rampart comes in. It's like this shine of light that just like appears. And it's like, <laughs> what are you guys whining about? Come on, yeah. let's party. And yeah. uh, that, that high energy, that excitement. And I think that's uh, uh, going to be really fun to explore even further. Because, yeah, she, she would be friends with Bangalore. Bangalore is a weapons expert. So she would go to the other weapons expert in the outlands to right. get like cool <laughs> shit, you know, yeah. uh, get her, get her weapons modded, you know, like she's just, it's respect and it's a friendship. And, uh, Drew Stoffer is, um, uh, the creative director who made that that video and usually the process is that I'll, I'll write the bios and come up with the characters and we usually find like a scene or a moment that kind of helps um, define that character a little bit uh, so I, I I put all that on the page and then uh, Drew Stoffer was the one who came back with that script um, that showed the uh, the slow build with the, mm. the legends just hanging out in this shop, mm -hmm. having a drink, just like giving each other crap. And I messaged him immediately and because he said it's just to me at first. And he's like, what do you think about this idea? I was like, I love this. This is exactly <laughs> what I'm waiting for. It's what I think we've been missing. And it's a good time to start doing that. It's just having our characters just relax for a moment, you yeah. know, just have a conversation. And you know, I would love to see more of that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. And, and season five, you're right. Uh, was a bit heavy, you know, we, like you're, you mentioned, you know, it was <laughs> all about killing the person who killed my parents and figuring out the whole secret behind it and why they're never, I mean, mm -hmm. and, and Anjali, I think your statement was so powerful about that character because um, there's been a lot of great media coming out now and how these, these big decisions for some of these characters uh, go either way. And in life, you can choose either way, right? You can choose to, and I, and I think you know been that way since the dawn of time you know if yeah. you look at all of the stories the ancient greek stories mm. it's that that really is it's about it's about man or woman's or or whomever's struggle with what do i do with what i've been given yes yes how do i move how do i how do i go on and yep. while revenge is a very exciting uh storyline to play it is mm -hmm. also a very destructive personal <laughs> line to play yeah. you, can only carry, you can only carry that story so far yes right? i mean that's i'm that's, sorry that i cut you off no no it's great i i love that point go ahead manny Oh, that, that's why we didn't want to actually go with that angle for rampart when all these people when when big sister and her gang burned down that shop her first instinct isn't revenge i want to go kill all of them you know right. her instinct is well, I got to build a new shop. You know, this yep. one will be better, though. This is going to be awesome. Oh, this guy, Bliss, just handed me this golden card. All right, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll get into these games and show off. I, I don't have to do all the work <laughs> to get And there. who knows? Maybe she's got great insurance. Yeah, she, yeah, she could have made money off that. Exactly. <laughs> who knows? <That's> true. <laughs> who knows? The, a glass half full character is uh, something that I think is always <laughs> welcome. And she's uh, really demonstrated that well in her writing and in her, uh, I think, just the, the way her voice comes off. Anjali, again, I, I keep giving you credit because I played Rampart all day. If you guys haven't played, I don't know if you've had some time <laughs> to play yesterday. Uh, but season six obviously is out, new map, all these great things, and obviously Rampart's a great character. We're not spending too much time talking about the kid. I'll have another video for that. But uh, playing her as an experience is a lighthearted experience too, and I think that is something that you uniquely brought um, with the way that you've portrayed the character. I wanted to ask you, I'm listening to some of the lines, 
and they catch me off guard. You know, when I'm dropping down, I'm like, did she just, what did she just say? Like, like guns and butts or something? What? Uh, yes, so yes. I want to know, <laughs> what are your favorite Rampart lines? Uh, maybe you could, you could say one that you, you know, you remember that stuck out to you. <laughs> so here is the thing, and I have to say this with a caveat because, you know, we record a lot of stuff ahead sure. of time, and I am not sure, just being brand new to the Respawn and, and the Impact family, I am not sure which things we have recorded have already been <laughs> right. into the game. Uh... So I don't, if I remember something that isn't in the game, and I say it now, then I've spoiled it for everybody. <laughs> so yeah. I will say from the stuff that I know that is out from the trailers, I mean, let's be honest, the you get a bullet and you get, I mean, that's kind of a, that's kind of a, that's a golden one. That's a super so golden one. And um, I love that one. And I love, uh, I love uh, the, you know, from the trailer, I love the whole, y'all got to clean knickers on, yeah. all that business. Yeah. Oh, cause she's just so like happy. She's just so, and then just all of the like, goodbye, you know, where, where are you going? Get back here. All of that kind of stuff. That's so much fun. So um good. to play the, and the then, first to, be line to, was and then the, to be able to say it with a little bit of an indian accent because it's not mm-hmm. again when you're uh, i'm not used to i don't think a lot of people and maybe i'm wrong because it depends on where you're from and who sure. you know but in my world i'm not i don't have a lot of uh fellow indians who are as gregarious or as uh, um slangy yeah yeah the word Definitely. you know like everybody's a little bit more elegant and educated and and so to have someone who's like, get your butt back here. Like, <laughs> right. I, it's so much fun to say all of those things. It's Very so, fresh. so, so much fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I'm sure I'm just going to, like, as as I get, you know, play more of the game and, and stuff, I'm sure I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember that one. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> Um, cause even now I'm thinking of a bunch, but I'm like, nope, just, I don't know. If it's <laughs> the yet. first, the first line I wrote for her was the fish line. Do you remember the fish line about the filter? Yes. Oh gosh. Is that in? Is that in? <laughs> that that one's in. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to remember how it, it was a long one. <laughs> yeah. It was like, but this is the cool thing is that she had so many lines where it's it. like, it's a little bit of a long journey. Yeah. Yeah. To the punch. There. <laughs> it is. You got it. But if you stick with her, it's going to be good. Yeah. It's going to be stick good. With her. Yeah. You remind me. It's like, you remind yeah, me that's of it. I had once, right? Yeah. You remind me of a fish I had once, so only lasted a day. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Something exactly. Like that. Got, got stuck so in good. a filter. Got stuck in a filter. That's why yeah. oh, you remind me of a fish I had once. Yes. Got stuck in a filter, only lasted a day. <laughs> <laughs> like, like she's, uh, just, yeah. she's so okay. random. She's so and random. I love it. It's so fun. It's so yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, fun is yeah. something we desperately all need a little bit more right now in the world with the way that yeah. everything's going. I think it's just been a, a real service and treat to get that uh, in in a character that's just so attached to her every moment. And so for me, I've really looked forward to that. And looking forward, uh, you know, Manny, since I have you here too, um, yeah. you know, we've this is a unique opportunity, I think, with a character and as the season progresses to tell a different style of story than we did over the last, you know, season, which we mentioned was a little bit darker, a little bit more dramatic. Where do you see and what can you tell us about what lies ahead for Rampart uh, and her storyline and kind of where she's going now that she's in the games? What's to what's ahead for Rampart? Um, that's a great question. We are constantly working on story. We're constantly developing stories for all of our characters. And as we make us uh, release a season after season, we're constantly adding new characters. <laughs> so it's been very challenging in order to keep track of all of our, uh, uh, not necessarily keep track, but I mean, um, shine the light on each story. But uh, for everyone who is playing season six, the comics that are happening for the quest, uh, that is, uh, if you the la- the first one came out yesterday, and that mm-hmm. features um, Mirage, uh, uh, Wraith, and Rampart, and we are going to see a development between those three characters and Pathfinder throughout Ooh. this season, which will then carry on until season seven and 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 so forth. So uh, I will say that just paying attention to those developments in that comic and seeing uh, and making your guesses and theories as to where things will go it's going to be very fun to see um her her development of that story uh and where uh where she picks her life up 
after that shop burned down and started a new chapter by being a part of this misfits group of, of legends. <laughs> exactly. um, and yeah, she's going to develop great friendships with characters and uh, maybe even have some connections to future characters. So, Ooh, okay. Uh, I feel like Anjali <laughs> might know something, but she's not, she's not telling us here. We can't. You know what? I'll, I'll be honest. I'm very, uh, I'm very good at forgetting things, uh, when it comes to, when it comes to things that I am not supposed to be able to share. Right. Um, so I, and I say this a lot about a lot of the things that, that I've, I've done when, when people are asking me and the community is asking me about them online. I'm like, you guys probably know more than I do. <laughs> exactly. So tag me, tag me <laughs> in everything so that I can keep up. Yeah, because let me know. I love, I love finding out, like, I, you know, any, any of the things, all of the, the, the phone messages that you guys put out, the voicemail messages. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys put really out were cool. so, so cool and so cool to get those actors. That was yeah. Very, yeah, very, very cool. great. And so all of the little, all of the little Easter eggs and all of the little treats and stuff like that, I'm, I'm finding things out sometimes too um so uh yeah i mean and if i did know i would I tell you, <laughs> you couldn't you couldn't yeah yeah I, I, exactly maybe if you're in your character she might let it slip you know she might make a joke about oh crap shouldn't have said that you know uh, I, I think uh, maybe maybe i think maybe. uh I, you know for me for me Anjali, um you know with the way respawn is uniquely kind of like positioning their voice i i feel like we've seen only really a couple games do it this way but in my opinion respawn and the voice acting team it's it's almost like a different dev team it's, it feels like another like they're like this own unit they're, they they yeah. walk together they do things together they join this mm -hmm. family everyone follows them and wants to know what they have to say what what is it like for you what was it like kind of seeing that team maybe in action did you have do you have any like familiarity with any of the other you know, voice actors? Have yeah. you met any of them, or like how did that come so about? And how's your experience? This is a this is actually a great uh, this is great in many ways. Um, so first of all, they have been unbelievably warm and welcoming, and like grabbed me with open arms and pulled me on into their wow. like it, it's been such a wonderful thing, and that goes for the entire uh, Apex and Respawn team. I mean the the amount the the, the amount of camaraderie that is uh, connected with this game, it's its not just in whatever lane you're in. Everybody is cross-pollinating, mm, if you will. So that's mm. been really lovely. Um, fun story, um, Roger and I, Mirage and I, went to high school together. No! So, yes! So we have that. And then uh, Zera, um, she and I have basically discovered that we're, you know, separated at birth because we have so much <laughs> so much in common so yeah it's definitely I, and obviously i knew darren from other work that we've done together so there's there's it's it's just been wonderful you know every time you work on a, as an actor every time you work on a new project um <clears throat> it really is so dependent your entire experience of it is so dependent almost more so than the role it's so dependent on the people that you are working with um, because if there's not the environment in which you are excited to create and you're excited to play, even if it's a tragedy, it just it just makes the whole thing a little bit less than. And so I do think that the way that this entire cast is so connected definitely elevates everything that they do. I think the way that this dev team comes in and supports that and, and wants everybody to engage and engage with each other and engage with the community is a really beautiful thing. Um, and, I, and I do hope uh, that it makes it more fun for the community because we we want to be a part of it with oh, yeah. you. We love we love we love getting in there with you and playing with you. And I want to know about other people's experiences and stuff. And so yeah, I'm I'm super excited. The only thing that has kept me from already throwing a party and <laughs> having everybody over is, is obviously quarantine and COVID obviously, and everything. Yes. So, yeah. but I've already I've already committed. I've told them as soon as it's safe, you guys. Mm -hmm, yeah. Our place is not quite big enough to keep us uh, keep us all six feet apart six in masks. Feet, but so. Right. So as soon as it's safe, um, please come over. Everybody's yeah, it's 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 a it's an incredibly lovely group. Uh, Manny, anything to, to speak up on that or just your experience? I, I mean, no, I, I, she nailed it on the head. I mean, that is exactly um, how I feel with the voice actors. Uh, we just we talk often. Uh, you know, we we did like a Zoom drinks the a uh, couple of the uh, writers nice. and the and the actors a, a, a couple months ago. Um, 
but uh, uh, I talk to them uh, often. I do. Chris Edgerly has his 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 uh, stream that mm-hmm. um that I've been on a couple times. Uh, and JB uh, JB and I have known each other for a long time because he was on Titanfall. He's right. he's been in every game I've ever written. He was in Titanfall, Titanfall Two. Star Wars, Fallen Order, and Apex. So mm. I can't escape JB. <laughs> uh, and I just, I love him with all my heart. He's the, the sweetest. And uh, and meeting all all new people and just also the, the, uh, the differences in regards to um, uh, I don't want to say necessarily experience, but I just mean like they're the veterans versus the ones who are yeah. uh, are like been five years versus people who've been in for 30 years, you know? Right, right. And it's like, everyone just is so still on the same page with how they approach these characters. And it's just learning from each other in so many different ways. And uh, yeah, I really wish we could just be partying with them all the time. Oh, but yeah. I've always thought about that in regards to apex is that, um, and this was kind of not at the beginning, but as things grew, we started realizing that it does really feel like the a whole game of Apex is about this family. This mm-hmm. family, of, so I've been uh, calling the legends a family because that's what they are. They they are dysfunctional. They're misfits. Some of them want to kill each other. Like it's a family. <laughs> it's a family. Yeah. yeah, your family's not trying to kill you every now and then. Yeah, are come you, on. <laughs> If people aren't mad at you occasionally, you're not living. Come on. Exactly. (laughs) That's love. That's That's how we treat it. We're arguing. Yeah, Yeah, no, our family is not afraid to be quiet. I will tell you that. I feel like uh, you, you you do have a lot of fun in those moments. With, you know, you mentioned that one thing about the process and, you know, we've covered so many great little moments, what's next and, and kind of her backstory and how you guys all came connected. But I do want to ask at least one question on sure. the process of, you know, the character and getting the lines right, getting that tone right. And Manny, what it's like for you on the writer's side to find that. And uh, also, I think, Anjali, how, what it's like for you in the booth, you know, to really like mm-hmm. go through and workshop and figure out, OK, how do I, you know, and just kind of what you experience, not just with Rampart, but maybe somebody who doesn't really understand or, you know, what is voice acting? It just I, I don't really connect to how like that's anything but just saying a line. Right. Um, might uh-huh. learn something about. So, um, yeah, Manny, maybe we'll start with you and then and then Anjali from your POV. Sure. Um, it's it, uh, one thing that we are trying to get better at is getting um, getting auditions out, and so that we can find an actor before we start writing. Because as we are making a live service game, we're in basic constant ship mode, and we're yeah. constantly writing stuff. And as a writers, we are much further. Uh, ahead than the rest of the team because of localization because of the process it's like writing then you have to get the actor then you have to get the the booth and you got to record and then you got to uh edit and then audio has to take care of it and then localization has to translate it to other languages and they have to cast so we're like usually uh a couple of seats like i think i finished writing rampart like December or something like that. Wow. You know? Yeah, I think that's when I think that's when I had yeah. my first audition was was right around that. Yeah, it takes wow. a long time, and because yeah. of that, we don't get the actor in. Like we don't cast as fast as we could, so mm. we're trying to get a little more ahead of that because it's harder to write the character because I know what they sound like in my head, but the actor brings so much to the table, right. in so many ways that that you know. I couldn't even piece it together on my own and I shouldn't, I shouldn't be, this is not just the Manny show, you know? Right. right. And there's this awesome trust that is created between the actors and the writer. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but this has specifically to do with comedy in my, uh, in my experience, but um, the, the writer's writing a joke and the actor is performing that joke, but the writer needs to know that that actor, uh, will be able to make that funny. But the actor also needs to know that the writer wrote it to make it funny. And Mm. if you have uh, a writer who's telling an actor to just read it the way they want it, that's not going to make it funny. If you have an actor trying to improvise around the joke, you're going to lose what the comedy is. Mm. And so you 
have that mutual trust, which we we have, and and that's what what I look for when looking for certain actors. And I found that you know with 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 Chris, with Roger, with uh, with Darren, and, and what not just comedy. I mean, all of the actors that we have are able to have that understanding and mutual respect. And Anjali is absolutely no different. Like definitely. We're, we we were playing with these lines. I she could talk more to that, but I mean, in the booth, it's like, how how can we make this funny? How can we find the rhythm? Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. There was definitely this. This was one of the most collaborative processes that I have worked on, and it, and it, again, it it makes it more joyful when you feel like you're a part of it. Because as an actor, you always want to come in and you want to be the most respectful of the people who created the character yes. and created the story, right? So you're, you're sort of testing the waters as to where, how much, how much of me do you want mm. in this? How much mm. of me do you want in this? Do you want me to do, do you want me to create what you have envisioned or are we building this together? And it was very clear from the beginning that we were building this together, which just made it like a, a like it was fun. It was like a dance party. And <laughs> it was literally in the booth, it was literally a dance party dance for time. me. Oh, yeah. Because we- I was very, very, you know, they gave me enough space that I could be really physical uh, when I was doing everything. I was always wearing either my Prince t-shirt or my Billy Idol t-shirt because <laughs> I felt like they were a little like, you know, like a little, uh, not punk, but you know, like a little like edgy. And yeah. I could channel the great one. I could channel Prince. Uh, and his sass. Yep. And uh, <laughs> and and uh, it was all very uh, loose. It was all mm. very very loose and fun that way. And um, and they, everyone was so open to. Okay, I'm feeling a rhythm. I'm feeling a rhythm here. But the rhythm, I'm like, it feels like there's one extra word. So we really got to. We got to like comedy science it. Yeah, there it because is. Because that's right? another that's another thing that I don't know that 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 people necessarily recognizes how much specificity goes into writing comedy mm. and then performing the comedy and figuring out, okay, but if you put the accent there, it's not funny. But if you put the accent there, it's funny. It if is. you take out a uh, in this sentence, it's funny. If you put it's in a uh, in this yeah. sentence, it's funny. And Manny is like on top of that. And so being able to, being able to go back and forth with everyone and do that. And then God loves them. They let me play occasionally and throw in my own, my own lines and I half the time like where yeah. my laugh is coming because yeah. I'm laughing at myself I'm <laughs> laughing at how look at how funny my own joke is uh. <laughs> and that so every time you hear that <laughs> like that's me <laughs> that's me being like hey, look at how funny I am uh. um, and so it's actually it's actually part of her delight is my delight yeah being able to share this, this this kind of awesome being with these great lines these great clips <laughs> Um, yeah i would also say like you know i call the legends a family but you know just like the actors are a part of our family so is like everyone at respawn and and we mm. all kind of really do listen to each other and play off each other eric kraber who is our audio director was able to uh yes the kraber's named after him uh, <laughs> uh he he knows exactly how to how to how to work with both of us kind of figuring out how we want to hone in onto uh, what what we're going for, and then we have our animation department. Who uh, it's it's interesting because the lines on paper and sometimes the dialogue won't help too much to understand what the animation is about because the animation is like someone who's has a giant gun and going crazy and right. picking gum up off her shoe and eating it. Right. Like you really won't necessarily find that in that dialogue. So the writing department works a lot with the animation department to try to figure out, okay, this is the voice of the character and the personality, but what is the, the action of this character? What is the, you know, and uh, it's so fun to see Anjali in the booth. Cause you like, Oh, just just do it. Anjali's doing right. <laughs> Someone videotaping her moving and laughing. Yeah. And they're like, okay, let's just let's just use that. Are we? I mean, are we allowed to talk about because uh, all the at home stuff that we did too? I think Cause, so. Cause, I mean, because 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 there are aspects of this that that we did do mocap for. Oh. Right? And uh, which I and I am so actually thrilled about it because I've never done mocap before, and we had to do it because of quarantine and because of safety. We had to do it where I, we're doing the mocap out of our house and wow. streaming it. And it was the most incredible thing. And, you know, thank God for technology and thank God for us having a, a home studio that's equipped enough that we can, you know, right. that I can run around <laughs> and do stuff in there. Um, but like, it, it's such a joy. The animation department is incredible. They made me like something about my face that I have always hated. Oh, no. <laughs> that I 
have a little bit of a crooked smile. And when I talk, and now everyone can notice it. <laughs> but I have a little bit of a, like a little thing that like my one side of my mouth goes up a little bit. And I'm like, oh, I don't really like that. That's no. not, okay. It's not symmetrical. It's not pretty. It's not this. And I saw it on her and I was like, oh, that's dope. That's dope. <laughs> that's fire. Oh, she's, that looks, she's badass. Yeah. That's so cool. And so it's so lovely to see a little bit of oneself that you know you weren't able to necessarily see because now you now you're seeing it as another character, right? And um, and that's thanks to the brilliance of what you guys have done creating. I mean, I was considering shaving one of my <laughs> might not do my, my might not this time, right? Good. Yeah, yeah, might not be able to play a doctor with a shave. <laughs> what about um, the piercings? Have you thought about the piercings? <laughs> Go with the Solid. ears. That's go with the ears. I was thinking, thinking about the back, the back, the, the shave at the back of my head, and I'm like, yeah. I like my hair. <laughs> the tattoo. I like the tattoo. Does that have anything to do with uh, just any significance, Manny? Or you know, I don't know. Obviously, that's a visual. Do you mean the hand on her hand? Uh, or doesn't the, she have one on the back, back of her neck? That's her, like the uh, her logo. Um, yeah. Her shop's logo is got it. Is on. Got it. Yeah, kind of shows that Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's just a logo. She didn't get. There's no significance to the. It's yeah, that's like, her. Hey, that's my the name one. Is Rampart. You're... It's an R. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, yeah. Got it. <laughs> not yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not yet. But, but, you know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. But yeah, like like Anjali did point out, we did we have been doing a lot of this stuff from home. Mm. Um, it, actually, Anjali and I haven't even met in person. Oh, wow. Because I, I, I live in New York City. So even when before COVID started, I was doing this via uh, 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 streaming. So um, I was uh, and then we we're hoping to meet, you know, at some point. But then that's sort of how everyone's been doing this. Everyone's been working from home. And she brought up the mocap and everyone has been doing this. Like our animation department built like their own mocap in their backyards, you know, and everyone's doing it through. <laughs> through zoom and it's yeah. just it's really just amazing that our team has managed to to put out two seasons already through this situation and everyone's just i mean i couldn't be more thankful for that company like they are working they're they're pr they're so proud of what they're doing but also they're mm -hmm. they're taking it easy and smart and yeah 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 it means a lot as an actor you know obviously it means a lot when you're respected in the artistic process but it means a lot when they care about your well-being too yeah mm -hmm. and uh and not all production companies in the world are necessarily as thoughtful um and so it's re it's, it's from the beginning it's been so clear that these guys care about everyone who works with them and for them mm. so uh you know we've had such a great time guys i think we're, we're close to wrapping it up here but i did yeah. want to just say thank you so much for being uh, here and sharing the process, sharing who you are. Um, you know, I, I think this is something that the, the community is going to be really excited to see. But more importantly, like, uh, Anjali, are you are you uh, doing uh, streaming? Are you, sorry, YouTube? Like, what's going oh, on? Where, where can people to, hang all, out you with can, you? And... You can just Google me. I'm everywhere. Okay. Um, uh, uh, yes, I'm on the Twitter and the YouTube the and the Instagram and the, <laughs> all the things that the kids do these days. I'm not on Twitch. <laughs> So much as a, I'm, a, I'm on Twitch as a participant, not as a streamer. Gotcha, um, gotcha. So I love to, I love to hang out on other people's streams and stuff like that. But uh, you can find me at Sweet, the word Sweet, but with three E's because we're spelling. Uh, <laughs> S W E E E T A J, Sweet Ange, uh, all in all of the places. And please, I am so, I, I love being on there. I love engaging with people. Say hi. In fact, can I show off my little? Yeah, yeah, my, please. Show, of course. I'm so excited about this. So as soon as the character came out this incredible fan art started coming out and uh one of the artists sent me this beautiful what i know her name is now i don't know how to pronounce her name exactly because she i know she's on twitch and instagram too and it's, she put poor anjali on there as well but it's uh von holda i think v-o-n-h-o-l-l-d-e she's in costa rica Wow. And the colors, the colors of this season just work perfectly with the <laughs> So as you can see, it matches very well. Very and nice. Very and it's going to go up, uh, up along with with everything else. And again, it's just such a testament to the artistic community and the and the, the you know the, the family that you guys have built. That people just jumped in and started. Oh, they're like, so good. They're just so yeah. creative and so generous and so excited. And um, and it's a it's a really cool thing. You've built something very lovely. Mm, mm, and yeah, that community is so good. Yeah. 
Yeah, Manny, just uh, thanks, man, for hanging with us as well. Sure. I mean, obviously, uh, you, you're hard at work working on stuff that we probably don't know about yet. Um, Absolutely. You know, if, if there's a, if there's a little something to, to look at, it doesn't have to be Easter egg. It could be nothing. A little like, hey, keep your eye on, you know, anything uh, for the community or just, hey, enjoy season six. And, uh, you know, there'll be a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline. Yeah, I, uh, the the comic is this is what this season's about. You know, uh, Tom Cassiello and Ashley Ree, we all kind of work together on this, knocking out this comic and the end in these amazing sort of cliffhangers. Keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on the developments from it. Uh, and that's that's. I will say that uh, whatever happens to that comic will uh, there'll be connections later on in the uh, rest of um, the run of Apex. Nothing gets forgotten. Ooh, nothing gets forgotten. <laughs> I like that line a lot. Well, uh, all their info, if you guys want to follow with Manny and Anjali, well, I connect with them on Twitter a lot. It's a great place to see what they're thinking, but they have all their other socials. I'll put that uh, in the description below. Uh, again, thank you both so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, thank you. It's just been a pleasure. It's been absolute pleasure. So, so much fun. Yeah, I can't wait. I, I need to go back and now play Rampart again in season six. So <laughs> I, I got more gameplay to record. I'm going to let these two go. But thank you guys for watching. As always, never give up, never stop gaming. And we'll see you all next time.